Welcome to Civil Share YouTube channel. Hi friends, thanks for waiting to watch part 3. In this video we are going to see the balance topic of pipe rack design structural guidelines. That is pipe rack super structure design and its adequacy design check. Hey let's go to the video now. By the by those who are missed the previous part 1 and 2, links are provided in description. Please do visit first and watch this video. Before that, please do subscribe to get more videos like this. Ok let's see, the pipe rack superstructure design. General. The principal structural components of a pipe rack are the transverse bent beams, the bent columns, longitudinal struts, vertical bracing, horizontal bracing, and foundations. Transverse bent beams. In computing the allowable bending stress, FB, the unbraced length shall be taken as the span of the beam and the AISC factor CB shall be used to account for end fixity. The value of 1.0 is a very conservative and safe assumption. In no case shall the assumption of lateral support from piping be used in computing FB. Generally, the depth of horizontal members should not be less than 1 by 24 of the span. If top flange lateral loads are significant, the transverse beam shall be investigated for bending about the YY axis and for torsion. This can be estimated by using this moment MY into 2 by section modulus SY. Special consideration shall be given to the design of transverse beams which support large vapor lines to be hydroxted or which support large anchor or guide forces. Horizontal bracing may be required locally if the local bending stresses are too high. Bent columns. The first type, strutted, has longitudinal struts between the transverse frames. This addition provides stiffness in the longitudinal direction. In addition, diagonal bracing can be added in order to act together with the longitudinal struts to resist the horizontal loads. This arrangement is very common. Usually, if using strutted pipe racks, the columns shall normally be designed with pinned or fixed base, depending on the lateral drifting requirements. Pipe racks without longitudinal struts are called unstrutted pipe racks. So the columns are act as cantilevers to resist lateral loads longitudinal to the pipe rack. For unstrutted pipe racks, columns shall be considered pinned in the transverse direction and fixed in the longitudinal direction. The major axis of columns should be perpendicular to the longitudinal direction of the pipe rack. T. Support column bases shall be considered fixed in both the transverse and longitudinal directions. The major axis of columns may be turned in either direction. Column base plates for major and miscellaneous pipe racks and T supports that are to be attached to concrete foundations shall be four bolt base plates. Longitudinal strut. In areas where gravity loading of struts are anticipated, Struts shall be designed for axial loads produced by longitudinal pipe loads plus gravity load moments and shears. Such struts should be designed for the actual load but not less than 50% of the gravity loading of the loaded transverse pipe support beam. Where gravity loading of struts are not anticipated, struts shall be designed for axial load only. The primary source of axial load is longitudinal pipe loads. Vertical bracing. Vertical bracing may be used to transmit transverse and longitudinal forces to the foundations. 
K bracing or X bracing is usually used for this purpose. Braced bays in strutted pipe rack systems should be spaced at 40 meters maximum. Longitudinal bracing should be provided in about every fourth bay. Compression bracing for steel pipe rack systems shall normally be designed with wide flange and structural T-shapes. For tension bracing, single angle, double angle or structural T's may be used. Foundations Foundations shall be designed and type of foundation to be used in accordance with the project soil report recommendations. In Piperac foundation design, buoyant force shall be considered when applicable. Buoyant force included in the design shall be based on project water table elevations, which produce the most unfavorable effect on the foundation. Now, the pipe rack adequacy check. The following points should be checked while doing pipe rack design. 1. Usage of right, latest codes. 2. Estimation of missing loads. 3. Elimination of design errors. 4. Essential design checks to be performed. 5. De rating factor, say 15%, to be applied in existing model. 6. Elastic analysis shall be used to determine moments and forces in pipe rack members. 7. Practical techniques for strengthening of structurally deficient existing members and foundations are detailed with neat sketches. 8. Pipe supporting frame system is designed as rigid frame in transverse direction and braced frames in longitudinal direction. 9. Electrical conduit and cable trays must be support at every 10 feet or 3 meters. 10. Structural components of pipe rack must be capable of resisting axial loads, shear, moment and torsion produced by load combinations as given already, refer part 2 video. Hello, freshers and beginners, I hope you understand my explanations about the pipe rack designs. In line with this part 3 video of pipe rack design, previously I have made two parts, if you still have not visited, please don't forget to watch those videos. Links are available in the description. And also, comment me here the new topics, which you want me to make video like this. I will surely make it for you. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.